Thank you for joining this session. This session is for the uh, software-defined hardware-accelerated data-centric computing and networking service. We'll cover two main topics. First off, we'll explore the ION, Innovative Optical and Wireless Access uh, <coughs> Wireless Network, and uh, that enables the data-centric infrastructure of all 14 networks, which has a feature of the software-defined composite design infrastructure. Then I will introduce the software-defined hardware device feature that is a DP and IPU open point infrastructure in data-centric model. My name is Hidetsugu Sugiyama. I'm a chief architect director and the alternate board director of the ION Global Forum. My name is Masahara Kanda. I'm from NTT. I'm uh, developing and researching disaggregated computing in ION project. Here's a quick look at uh, today's agenda. We'll first update the uh, ION Global Forum activities relating to data-centric infrastructure development, followed by the DPU, IPU, open program infrastructure in the data-centric model. During this session, we'll have a demo to show the, how the Intel IPU enables the Microsoft level-based Kubernetes to build a function-specific network for users' cloud-native application on OpenShift host. The, through the, this session, I hope you will see that the, why the composability is vital and uh, why the DPU and IPU are fitting into the composite design infrastructure. So let's start with a question. How many of you are familiar with the ION data centric infrastructure? Please raise your hand. <laughs> <laughs> oh, OK. Thank you. For those who want more detail, we have posted several documents on the ION Global Forum site covering the functional architecture of the data centric infrastructure. You can get our public document at the URL listed in the bottom of the slide. Additionally, NTT and Fujitsu published the ION POC report last year that this architecture concept already achieved a 62% reduction in the power consumption compared to the conventional code server. We are in the middle of the exciting evolution in the hardware. With data center infrastructure architecture, development continues to advance in the ongoing device innovation. Some device vendors are actively developing the photonic electric convergence chip. And in the future, we are looking forward to seeing the desired computing system built on the photonic electric convergence fabric. Right now, our focus is on the composite desired infrastructure, which is key building block in the data center infrastructure. Vendor like Fujitsu have already released the CDA product based on this approach. Based on this advancement, we accept the CDA product to leverage the CXL to increase compass, uh, composability furthermore. With the composable design infrastructure, resources like a GPU and DPU and IPU uh, not st statically configure in the specific server like a traditional code setup. Instead, these devices are in the large resource pool that dynamically allocate through the high-speed fabric. This flexibility allows us to assemble the PCI device with a CPU host from the resource pool on demand and create a logical service compute nodes for specific workload, which can eliminate the cause of the resource over provisioning that is often required due to the traditional code system. For example, if the customer needs 585 teraflop using the 100 GPUs. Traditionally, 25 code server with uh, four PCI slot each will be required. With CDI, the same performance can be achieved using only five CPU hosts with uh, 100 GPUs. So this approach reduces the server cost by 88% while also lowering the power consumption. 
This is one of the main benefits of the composer design infrastructure. Now I'd like to hand over to the NTT Kandasan, who will provide an update of the NTT's latest activity in the composer design computing project. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Uh, the AIML workloads uh, processed on the cloud or on-premise servers have recently increased. As you know, Kubernetes is a great tool, and uh, many AIML development frameworks backed by it have become increasingly, incre increasingly utilized. And uh, in these application frameworks, a series of processing is defined as a pipeline, and each process is defined as a step. Kubernetes pod is launched for each step. Generally, AIML workload is large, so we would like to use accelerators specialized for each process rather than CPUs. So uh, there are a lot of challenges of process acceleration in Kubernetes. The first is non-composable. It is difficult to modify system configuration in response uh, to changing requirements and also difficult to reuse and effectively, if, if, effectively utilize resources. The second is low customi customization and integration capabilities. It is difficult to manage accelerated system parts with Kubernetes. It is complicated to integrate with other systems or parameters adjustments. The third is vendor locking. We should be free to use various vendors accelerators devices. The fourth is cost effectiveness. We would like to reduce uh, redundant resources to adapt to scale changes and also reduce cost due to the uh, prevalence of custom parts and application specific aspects. Uh, the last one is CPU overhead limiting performance. Increased overhead from CPU processing task uh, results from CPU intervention in communication between accelerators, such as memory copying in the host. So uh, we have developed our own controller or to chain accelerators to solve those challenges shown, shown in the previous slide. Uh, we use Kubernetes custom resource as an extension mode to manage accelerators and their connections. Uh, our resource model has a layer structure. The top, le top level layer is the pipeline definitions, which defines the pipeline to process workloads with accelerator chaining. The second layer is the abstract layer, which manages accelerators and their connections resources. The bottom layer is the individual functions and the connections layer which manages the hardware resources for concrete functions and connections. This architecture provides the Kubernetes APIs to deploy, configure, and manage the lifecycle of accelerators and the, the connections between them. And here is the overall configuration of our controller for accelerator chaining. The yellow boxes are the Kubernetes custom resources I explained, I explained in the previous slide. And the blue boxes are the operators that handle the associated Kubernetes custom resources for each. And as you see, uh, there are too many custom parts. So uh, we thought we should redesign the architecture with fewer custom parts and use more OSS. We define the requirements to a more manageable level in the first. Uh, in, in this list, uh, step one, uh, data flow specification. 
uh, determine the detail for each function and connection within the data flow. Uh, we have not found any OSS project related this, uh, to this step. Uh, step two, data flow definition. Define the data flow based on the processes the user wants to execute. For now, our controller uses YAML files, but we might be able to use Kubeflow or Algo and other similar technologies. Uh, step three, uh, resource scheduling. Determines the de uh, deployment destination based on the hardware requirements and the interconnection needs for each functional block. Uh, we expect the DRA, uh, dynamic resource allocation, and the cumulative scheduler to be the basis of this feature. Uh, step four, uh, data flow deployment. Allocate hardware resources by pressing ports based on scheduling results and configure the hardware. This feature is related to the Kubernetes device drivers and DLA vendor specific plugin and OPI. Uh, this slide shows the architecture of OSS based composable disaggregated, disaggregated computing. The dark blue boxes are elements uh, that already exist, but we think their feature need to be expanded to realize our concept. Uh, the current major issues are listed uh, here. Uh, how to create specified data flow, how to configure accelerators, and how to configure device direct connection paths. Uh, we are planning to our controller as OSS for reference of the accelerator chaining concept in December 2024. Uh, we'd like to discuss our concept in the various OSS communities with it. All right, uh, let's dive into our next topic the DPU and IPU open plan infrastructure within the Yeah, within the ION data centric model. So Kandasan has a primary cover the uh, composability within the OpenShift host Kubernetes cluster, which sit in the ION computing layer. By implementing the DPU and the IPU through the open program infrastructure with OPI in the data center model, we can enhance composability for cloud native application. This is done by the offload network function onto the DPU and IPU, decoupling the network management from the ION computing layer. This slide shows a high-level architecture design for scalable performance in the workload in case of the Intel IPU. It supports a wide range of the use case by enabling the flexible service chaining of the network function within the IO networking layer, which is an Intel IPU with a data device edge. In the case of the Intel IPU, Key component here is the flexible program packet processing engine that is optimizing specifically for the VCHP4 offloading. This engine allows for the service function chaining, so more service can be offloaded to the IPU. With the IPU handling the resource intensive tasks like uh, packet processing, network functions such as firewall, packet filtering, and uh, compression can be chained together to create a complex network service. Here is a demo setup. At a high level, the Intel IPU includes the IPU Management Console, IMC, and the ARM Compute Complex, ACC. Intel IPU ACC runs a microsite on the rail, which is a data device edge. So you can use a Kubernetes CLI in IPU to enable the CNF container network function. The IPU PCI card can be composed and integrated directly into the ION computing layer running OpenShift CPU host. 
So let's take a look at the demo showing the how the Intel IPU smoothly integrates with the OpenShift Kubernetes and runs the network function on the data device edge of a MicroShift rail-based Kubernetes within the IPU. So in this demo, uh, you will see the how we can provision the manage the IP, uh, Intel IPU within the composable OpenShift container platform cluster. It is essential to have the Kubernetes cluster set up and uh, uh, with the exit OpenShift worker node that includes the uh, uh, Intel IPU <coughs> so the host can see the PCI uh, driver in advance, okay? So to integrate the uh, PCI uh, card, that is uh, another uh, task in the CDI side. So once CDI manager composes the PCI card, we can start to build this software, okay? So in this setup, we can see that uh, how the uh, first OS, it's, it's a rel, uh, rel core OS, uh, already detected the PCI device using the uh, simple uh, LS PCI command and IP command. This setup can actually be automated uh, part of the OS progeny, but uh, uh, for the demo purpose, uh, we use the terminal for, to show them step-by-step uh, -step manually, okay? So you can see that the fish device, and we use the let fish API through the IMC, Intel IMC, to install the let device HOS, okay? Then we can just try to reboot the IPU card. Once IPU is restarting, that uh, uh, received, uh, we received the DHCP request and uh, we assign the IP address. The based on that, the administrator can connect the Intel ACC, which is running the microsoft uh, or the, the device edge. Okay. So uh, you can see that the Microsoft is running now in the IPU ACC, okay? And also the uh, Intel plugin automatically install in the Microsoft. That Intel plugin is, uh, is uh, one of the mo key modules to communicate the packet processing engine, okay? And then at the uh, DP operator also has been installed and uh, with uh, this DP operator, we can try to execute a DPU demo to interwork with the uh, uh, Intel plugin to manage the uh, uh, data pipeline inside the uh, uh, people engine, okay? So we created the uh, uh, CR uh, DPU operator and uh, configured the custom resource. Okay. And uh, at the uh, x86 host side, uh, cloud native administrator uh, user can use the uh, uh, operator hub to install the DP operator. There are two types of DP operator, one for the I Intel IPU side, the other for the x86 host side. And this uh, DP operator for x86 is very simple and just try to deploy the DPU demo uh, which connect to the, uh, another DPU demo inside the IPU. And also uh, Intel plugin also uh, uh, automatically installed. And uh, this is a uh, set, uh, demo set. So whenever a uh, worker node restarting, always uh, Intel plugin is running uh, together with a uh, DPU demo. And also uh, we elaborate a node uh, that has a IPU resource, okay? And also, uh, <coughs> When we enabled the DPU demo, uh, also uh, uh, SRV uh, virtual function also we aut enable automatically, so that uh, uh, each specific port needs uh, uh, that needs IP resource, it automatically enabled the SRV to connect the uh, P4 uh, engine directly. Yeah, you can see that SRV secondary interface in the port.
And uh, let's see that uh, how to communicate port to port uh, through the Intel IPU. So first, that we try to build at the two ports on the OpenShift host. <coughs> and these ports are automatically connected uh, into packet processing engine with uh, uh, SRB. So this is actually basic setup. Just uh, whenever a port needs a network function, we, uh, we just build a port and that uh, and with a uh, IP resource using the uh, SRB. So that any port connected or any port will connect the uh, packet processing engine inside the IPU. So we can control the uh, network traffic within the IPU. Yeah, we are using the, the IPATH and the ping command to check the, the co uh, connectivity. Okay. And uh, we try to add the network function. How we can add the network function is we just try to execute the uh, uh, network container function on top of the micro shift, okay? This is a very simple way. We got, uh, it's a, IPU is just a, a Kubernetes uh, worker node to build a container application, okay? So in this case, uh, we use the uh, primitive space metric uh, application run inside the IPU connecting the uh, packet processing engine. So through that, uh, uh, this uh, traffic flow, that uh, ev uh, every traffic will go through the network uh, metric function through the uh, Intel packet processor engine before it reaches the port, okay? And this uh, uh, network function exposed a uh, uh, <coughs> dashboard, a graph on dashboard, so we can see, we can see that the, what traffic volume there in through that uh, IPU. Yeah. So any uh, traffic flow change uh, dynamically reflected the uh, uh, graph on dashboard. Because uh, all traffic goes through the network function, so uh, let's try to remove the network function uh, to see the behavior in the IPU side, okay? So now uh, network function is deleted, but uh, the traffic flow was uh, through that network function, so therefore the packet has been dropped for a while, and uh, restore the uh, without any uh, network function because the, the default traffic is goes through the uh, packet processing to the e bus uh, port. Then we, uh, let's try to add another network function which, uh, which is uh, part of the firewall uh, to check the, the how to protect the data packet in the packet processing. It's a very simple application we are just implementing, yeah. So now uh, all traffic goes through the firewall network function.
then uh, we can just try to manage that the packet. For example, the, this time we protect the UDP packet, then that the uh, packet, UDP packet will be dropped. And uh, unblock the UDP, then the uh, traffic goes through again. Then also we can manage the IC, uh, ICMP packet with the same way. Okay. So let's wrap up the, this demo. And uh, in this demo, we went uh, through the uh, installation of the Red Hat Device Edge, which is uh, layer-based Kubernetes on the Intel IPU ACC, and enabling the network function, integrating the flexible packet processing engine for users' application running the OpenShift x86 host side. So the host side does not uh, uh, configure the many complicated uh, parameters. All of the uh, specific uh, uh, feature is already in, uh, offloaded in the IPU side. So you can add a more specific network function inside IPU rather than the running the uh, OpenShift host side. So we can release the CPU resource for the enterprise application, not necessarily to use the network function on the host in this case, okay? So the, the Intel Flexible uh, Packet Processing Engine plays a key role here, uh, handling the data packet processing with hardware speed, okay? The data device edge inside the uh, IPU is, uh, just gives us uh, flexibility to add a container network function running in the IPU rather than the CPU host. Actually, in the Open Program Infrastructure Project, we're still working on the DPI-IPU implementation in the code server. But uh, I want data center infrastructure is bringing the IOPI feature into the composite digital infrastructure. So this will allow for more flexibility resource assignment. For instance, that if the administrator needs the two IPU cards for a specific network function, the administrator can make the LSN1 in this diagram directly compose those two IPU cards with DP operator running the host side. Because the IP, inside IPU, the, another network administrator already installed the, the uh, DPU operator for the specific network function. So the x 8 host administrator does not need to care that, that function. Just they want to just want uh, which DPU operator <coughs> needs to install for the network service. So if we want to have the firewall service, you just install the DPU operator for the firewall service. You don't need uh, Described the, any specific uh, parameter. Okay. Before we close, the, uh, let's talk about uh, why the DPU and IPU are much better fit than the basic uh, smart NIC for building the composite digital infrastructure. DPU and IPU enable the network and the storage and the security function and can provide a service for users' application running on the x86 host with greater intelligence, even within the standard code server. Beyond these uh, intelligence function, DP and IPU also help to reduce the load of the CPU host and minimize uh, PCI traffic in the composer design infrastructure by directly managing the network control traffic. They can even handle the traffic between the two compute nodes over the data center switch fabric without needing the CPU host, okay? So, and looking to future, as we explore the optical computing in this desired environment, reducing unnecessary transaction within the switch fabric will be key. So this approach will also help the reduce the power consumption, which is an important factor in the hardware evolution journey. Okay, let's quick go over what we, we cover today. 
First, NTT introduced a new concept, okay? Native accelerator chaining within the ion computing. And uh, they are planning to release, release the reference software this December. Then we'll also talk about uh, something called uh, composite dissolved infrastructure. This technology will allow us for smooth integration with the CPU host to the various PCI devices like a GPU and FPGA and the IPUs and more. On top of that, decided computing can help cut down the power consumption by reducing the over provisioning of the resource for individual user workload. For those interested in the GPU composability, there's another session coming the, this afternoon. I list it in the bottom slide. I recommend you to join the, if you are interested in the GPU composability by dynamic resource allocation. The finally, I wrap up uh, showing the OpenShift, which is a lightweight Kubernetes setup based on the RHEL running on the Intel IPU ACC. So this setup will enable the function-specific networking by DP operator in composite disarray infrastructure. And that's it. Okay, any question? Okay. We are actively working in the ION Global Forum, especially the Data Center Compute and Network Service Task Force to help the shape the future of the data center infrastructure on the all photonic network. If you are interested in learning more about the data center infrastructure, please join us in the ION Global Forum. Thanks for listening.